Just so you know, if anyone actively prefers any of these games over an actual quality video game, they're probably five years old and are obsessed with YouTube shorts. The smartphone. The global sensation that can do literally anything you can imagine. You can watch movies, listen to music, think about that girl you fumbled, chat with your friends, it's got it all. And one of the main things many use it for is to play video games. So, what do you get when you cross an iPhone with a hedgehog? I was expecting to see a Sonic OC, but okay. Sonic the Hedgehog and smartphones have a pretty long history together. From having hastily emulated versions of the classic games on the App Store, to creating riots in the streets because a mainline Tony Hawk and Super Mario Sunshine inspired fully 3D game with a crap ton of playable characters is locked behind an Apple subscription service. With all that history, one question remains on only three people's minds. What is the best Sonic smartphone game? Now, I'm not talking about re-releases of pre-existing games, like the amazing white screen remix of the original Sonic games, or the port of the DS racing games, no, 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 no. I'm talking about full-on, bonafide Sonic smartphone games. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about, you know, like, the, the touchscreen phones, not the Nokia ones. I'm talking about the ones that your kid watches Skibbity Toilet on. Yeah, 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 that one, the one that you're holding right now. By the end, we're going to see how the best one stands up as a video game, but also as a mobile game you can just pull out in the middle of Study Hall. Let's start off with the first Sonic mobile game. Wow. 2012 Sonic Jump was the first original Sonic smartphone game. Is what I would say if I was a liar. Back in 2005, Sega released Sonic Jump for Java-based phones like the Blackberries. For those too young to remember, a Blackberry was essentially a little iPhone that had a small screen and a mini keyboard on it. It's weird to think that people could actually be that young. In Sonic Jump Java, you'd use the Sonic to move Sonic around as he jumps and make your way to the top. In the 2012 remake developed by Hardlight, however, you're tilting your entire device to aim Sonic onto a desired platform to reach the end of the stage. After completing around six stages in a zone, you fight Eggman and avoid him hitting you with his electronic field. There are five different zones to complete that are essentially identical to each other. They're pretty much palette swaps to get harder as you go along. No new gimmicks are really introduced. Each stage has regular platforms, a platform that will break on impact, and a platform with some sort of hazard. Maybe if you're lucky one of the platforms will have a buzzsaw instead of spikes. Ooh, how innovative. However, the game makes up for this with its cast of characters. While many of the other games we'll be discussing today only treat their characters with the same respect as Fortnite skins, Sonic Jump actually gives a darn and gives each character their own quirk. Sonic is your default character who can do the basic double jump that everyone else can do, Tails has slower descent speeds thanks to his tails, Knuckles has an uppercut that increases the height of his double jump, Amy has a floatier jump and descends slightly slower than Sonic, etc. Although they did kind of shoehorn in a few characters like Blaze who is literally just a Sonic clone. I have nothing more to say on the matter. Sonic Jump is one of those feel-good games that you can turn on for a quick moment when in the middle of doing other stuff. It's a well-controlling, tightly crafted platformer that leaves a bit to be desired in terms of level design, but is incredibly enjoyable in every other field. I really hope Sega puts this much passion into their next game. Oh no. You Grand Theft Auto fans think you have it bad with just now getting the GTA 6 trailer? Sonic Dash is older than most Sonic fans and it just got surged the freaking Tenric. You know when the last major update for Sonic Jump was? before you were born! Also developed by Hardlight, Sonic Dash is the longest lasting Sonic smartphone game and is also, in my opinion, the most lame. I'm not saying it's a bad game whatsoever, but this is definitely one of the more generic games in the library, so therefore Sonic fans will kill me because of it. Released shortly after Sonic Jump in 2013, Sonic Dash is an endless running game in the same style as Temple Run and Subway Surfers. Now, out of these two, I've really only played Temple Run when it was new, so if Sonic takes anything from Subway Surfers, I wouldn't really know when. I've probably lost the attention of all the seven-year-olds in the crowd, haven't I? Well, as you run through Sonic Dash, you have to jump over obstacles, slide to attack enemies and fit through spaces, and air trick your way into multiple different zones. Back when I used to play the game, the only playable zones were Seaside Hill, Ocean Palace, and Green Hill later on in 2016. Now with the new updates, they have tons of new levels, like uh, a snow level, and that one stage that we've seen in one, two, three, four, five games. Wow! Despite all that, just like Sonic Jump, every stage just feels like reskins of each other. They all have things to jump over and slide under in a quick automated section in an area to homing attack. There's no incentive to play a specific stage outside of their visual appearance. Either way, it's really weird seeing all these different stages in a mobile game and over on the console we have... This is more than a third of the game by the way. Unlike Sonic Jump, however, each character is... The exact same. You've played as Sonic 20 times, you've played as Sangha the Lamer 21 times. With every character being the same and no stages having their own identity, it feels like you have no reason to play this game outside of waiting for a job interview or something. Sonic Dash is the most simple of most of the games here, and that kind of kills it in a way. While it works for a simple game to pull out when you have nothing going on, it doesn't really have that hook to keep you invested. It's just a generic endless runner that just feels like Temple Run and feels <laughs> less fun. There's no way that a game like this would do what. Wow. By 2021, eight years after the game's initial release, Sonic Dash had accumulated over 500 million downloads. 
I mean, sure. Most people playing this game aren't nerds like me trying to see how this game stands out against its competition. They just want a fun game that they'll whip out of a doctor's office and never think about again. They see Sonic, the autistic neurons start dancing in their brain, and bam, 500 million in one downloads. Sega and Harlight have said time and time again after every milestone that they plan to support Sonic Dash for years to come. By the time the sun engulfs the earth, Sega will still be making Sonic Dash updates and will be adding Tawny the Hedgehog from the Sonic manga. Many might say, oh, why don't they make a sequel? Instead, they could add so many more mechanics and characters while keeping the original game still intact. Many other mobile games have done it. Well, Sega tried this, and nobody cared. Sonic Dash 2, Sonic Boom. Pick a dang title. Sonic Dash 2 is... Uh, hello? Oh, yeah. you see what do you mean Hardlight released a sequel to the Sonic Jump remake? Sonic Jump Fever. That's what my doctor said I had the other day. Sonic Jump Fever is Sonic Jump, but again. It is very similar, if not almost identical gameplay, but now you're on a time limit instead of reaching the top of a stage. There's also this boost mode you can activate that really just gives you bonuses. Because of this game being endless, instead of you progressing through each level, the stage rotates around each day by connecting to a server. Yep, that's right. Sonic Jump Fever is an online focused mobile game. And it won't be the last. Along with that, you can unlock Small Child to bring with you on sessions that you can raise and level up. Wow, how cool, they're pandering to my definitely existing nostalgia for a side mode that I didn't even like in a game that I'm not the biggest fan of. I HAVE to try this game out! Said nobody ever because Sonic Jump was delisted in 2016. Well, let's hope the next sequel Hardlight does doesn't have a heavy online focus. Oh look, it's Sonic Dash 2 Sonic Boom, a game that doesn't have a heavy online focus. During Sega's big autistic hyperfixation on giving Sonic blue arms, they plan on giving the Sonic series a complete rebrand with a new franchise, Sonic Boom. Boom was said to be the big comeback for the Sonic series after being ruined in the public eye by games released in the late 2000s. Sega had big plans for video games, action figures, plushies, TV shows, licensing deals, and not failure. As part of this initiative, Sega tasked Hardlight, the developers of Sonic Dash and Sonic Jump, to create a new mobile game based on the Sonic Boom franchise. So, what did they come up with? The best game so far. Sonic Dash 2 is weird, man. As a sequel to Sonic Dash, it is pretty much everything that made the game what it was. It's essentially a double run clone with a boost button that you obtain in short bursts. Now though, you can swing through the air with the Sonic Boom trademark inner beams by moving your phone around like in Sonic Jump. The game also introduces this mechanic where you can switch between characters in the middle of a run, freshening up the gameplay as you go along. Now, you might be wondering, all these characters are the exact same in the first Sonic Dash. What's the point of switching between them here? They have unique properties now, don't they? Now, the question must be asked, why is this in Sonic Dash 2? Like, bro, Sonic Dash 1 has so much more content in it, but there's nothing like this. Why? Well, maybe now that Sega's invested so much into Sonic Boom, this will become the main Sonic mobile game to play, and will eventually get more content than the first game. Alright, I'm giving up the axe, we all know what happens next. Due to the quality of the console games released, the platform they released on, and the time the Sega slot, slot, plop, 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 the time slot on the TV show, Sonic Boom became one of the biggest failures in Sega's corporate history. The company recorded a loss of almost $100 million within the span of five months. This forced them to restructure their offices and completely tank their budget for Sonic games to release after. The effects of this failure are only now being remedied with large successes of things like Sonic Frontiers and the Sonic movies. And then the Final Horizon came out and botched it. So obviously Sega would never return to the Sonic Boom franchise and thus never updated Sonic Dash 2. Oh. Randomly in 2021, over six years after the game's original release, Sonic Dash 2 received an update to add Vector the Crocodile. He comes with the ability to destroy every enemy in his path by rolling into a ball and blasting music. Harlight just dropped the best character in the game over half a decade after it was discontinued. Well, even without the weird release of Vector the Crocodile multiple years after the game was abandoned, Sonic Dash 2 is still a much better game than the first game in my opinion. While its selection of locations and characters may not be as vast, each run actually feels different from one another. There are actual reasons to choose between one character or another aside from holding a social status. Here, watch. How many of you have Tango the Lemur unlocked in Sonic Dash? You? Okay, I'm coming to your house to steal your phone. You have three days. At this point, you're probably thinking that there was no way Hardlight could outdo themselves with the next Sonic mobile game. Well, you're right. They didn't make the next game. In 2015, Sonic Team themselves would take a crack at developing a dedicated Sonic mobile game. They heavily teased this game as the next big release for the Sonic franchise. Thousands believed that we'd be finally getting a high-budget mainline 3D Sonic game on our mobile phones. And when Sega revealed what Sonic Runners would actually look like... It wasn't that. Sonic Runners was a 2D side-scrolling online-only endless runner that was mostly used as a coping mechanism for people who were burned by Sonic Boom. It appeared to be a tie-in with the Wii U game Sonic Lost World, two years after its original release. Okay, well, to be fair, Sonic Lost World was about to come to PC at the time, so this tie-in is somewhat justified. 
This port was mainly remembered for hosting a night party that ended in disaster. Well, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of Sonic Lost World, so I don't think this game will really click with me. I get it. I, I see the vision. In terms of gameplay, Sonic Runners is unironically one of the best mobile games I have ever played. Granted, I've only really played Angry Birds, Jetpack, Joyride, and Temple Run, but that's besides the point. The concept is so simple, controlling your character's vertical movement as they run across the screen, but learning about the intricacies and the specific movements in order to master the art of control is where the game shines in its ability to feel incredibly rewarding and satisfying. Sonic Team made a good video game! Now. How exactly does it achieve this? What specifics go into it? Well, Sonic Runner's basic gameplay boils down to your character slowly increasing in speed as you continue in a session. As you increase in speed, you need to collect crystals and rings and destroy badniks to increase your score and make perfectly timed jumps to last as long as you can in a session. There are more in-depth ways to increase your score as well, such as timing your jump to maintain speed gain from rolling down hills, timing jumps on springs to pull off tons of tricks, or using items such as wisps to destroy tons of enemies in one fell swoop. That's not even all there is to it though. Each character falls into three different types, speed, flight, or power. Each type can easily adapt to different stages, such as the speed characters being able to take advantage of the nimble movement required in Windy Hill, flight characters being able to reach the collectibles in Sky Road, or power characters being able to destroy super badniks in Lava Mountain. Every character can play in every stage, but it depends on who you play as and how you control them if you're going to experience everything the stage has to offer. And for a moment, can I talk about the sort of flow state you can obtain? By doing specific tricks, you can enter a flow state of sorts, where you're constantly racking up points and barely have to jump, and it's some of the most satisfying tricks I have ever ever pulled off in a mobile game. Again, the list consists of Angry Birds, Jetpack Joyride, and Temple Run. With the different types characters can have, the roster of characters in this game is absolutely insane. The Chaotix, Shadow, Omega, Metal Sonic, Big the Cat, Mephilus the Freaking Dark, and even Styx the Badger from Sonic Boom! This is back when Sega was trying to bring Styx into the mainline universe to not have the time put into making the character from Sonic Boom go to waste. The number of characters in this game wasn't too crazy compared to other mobile Sonic games, but it was definitely the most diverse. If you think the character roster is insane, don't even get me started on the soundtrack. Written by Tomoya Otani, just like the mainline games, the soundtrack is very rock and electronic heavy, with a few songs differing from those genres occasionally. This is unironically one of my favorite Sonic soundtracks of all time. There's just this general happy feeling to it all that heavily benefits the gameplay. With an incredible soundtrack, a great list of characters, and addictive gameplay, there is no way that this game can't succeed. On a completely unrelated note, what's the premium roulette? Yeah, Sonic Runners technically falls under the line of a gotcha game. A game that heavily incentivizes players to spend currency to unlock a random in-game item. Essentially, baby's first gambling addiction. A good example of this type of game from the modern day would be a game that I'm not allowed to say near Sonic fans due to the fact that they don't enjoy the idea of people preferring other franchises to their blue three foot tall god. The premium roulette was where the core of the problem laid. Costing around 50 red star rings, you had the chance of earning a buddy, which were companions that could give you a small boost, a level up for your buddy, or an entirely new character depending on which character was available at the time of you spinning the wheel. While the Red Star Rings were obtainable by normally playing the game, they weren't all too common, and if you really wanted to play as a character that you didn't have, you'd be spending ages grinding compared to spending your hard-earned check to even have a small chance of unlocking something good. Huh, <laughs> good old Sega aiming to be both Bethesda Studios and EA. This is generally among some of the worst practices I've ever seen in the Sonic series. There are many other instances of shameless greed, but this absolutely has to be one of the worst offenders. Well, I hope this worked out for you, Sega. Just kidding. You considered Sonic Runners a financial flop and shut down the game just over a year after its release. Die in a fire. In May of 2016, Sonic Team removed the ability to purchase red star rings and announced that the Sonic Runner servers would be shutting down two months later. While for any other game at the time, this would mean that you just couldn't make any purchases or receive new content, since Sonic Runners was online only, it required a connection to a server that would be shutting down in order to start the game. This would mean that after the servers were shut down, Sonic Runners would never be playable ever again. I remember this being absolutely heartbreaking during the announcement. I played loads of Sonic Runners when it was still around. I didn't spend any money on it, thank the lord, but I was still able to experience the core of the game and it was amazing. Seeing corporate greed completely destroy an addictive, passionate project like this was always a horrible thing to see firsthand, but to a young me, this one hit harder than any other.
Well, that was the end of Sonic Runners. I do need to mention this before I get a barrage of people storming my house to correct me. Almost three years after its initial shutdown, a group of Sonic fans got together to decompile Sonic Runners and give it new life with Sonic Runners Revival. It was nearly identical to the original game in terms of gameplay, but it also came with the removal of in-app purchases and making the Red Star Ring system much more generous. While the premium roulette is still in the game, it feels so much better knowing that my money has and never will touch this game. With the game being decompiled, the developers added new characters to the game, Marine the Raccoon, Whisper the Wolf, and Tangle the Lemur. Now look, Sonic Runner's Revival Steps, lend, lend an ear, lend an ear. As of this current discussion, Tangle the Lemur is not currently on the roulette and has not been on the roulette for a good while now. Many other characters from the original game are purchasable with a standard red star ring. However, new characters like Tangle are the exception. All I want is just a way to play as Tangle in this game. That's all I ask. On an unrelated note, Check your mailbox. Well, I've talked about Sonic Runners for long enough. Wrapping it up, the game has incredible game design, a masterful soundtrack, and an amazing roster of playable characters. However, the meddling of corporate greed and bizarre restrictions with online access inevitably cut this game far too short. Sonic Runners deserved better, and in another world, I wouldn't be surprised if it became one of the best general Sonic experiences of all time. But do you know it will never become one of the best general Sonic experiences of all time? you. Sonic Runner's Adventure, the first commercial product to make me consider hurting someone! I have been legally advised to not finish that statement. So, about a year and a half after Sonic Runner shut down, Sega reassured everyone that the beloved gameplay of Sonic Runners would not be going away, as they hired the developers of freaking Minion Run to revise Sonic Runners to be better than ever. This is the same company that promised us a Sonic game that would focus on quality just before giving us one of the worst received Sonic games of all time. Sonic Runner's Adventure's visual direction completely destroyed the simplistic, soft vibe from the original game. Rather than giving characters outlines to allow them to be easier to be seen while running at high speeds, everything is a plastic, childish art style that could get somewhat confusing when running at higher speeds. Not that focusing on higher speeds matters though, since the game is no longer an endurance test, but rather a level by level experience. Ah! Yeah, this doesn't work. The main thing that made Sonic Runners addicting in the first place was trying to last as long as you could as your speed would continue to rise. Now, your speed is mostly locked to a set speed depending on the level, and the game's focus is set on you having enough endurance to see it to the end. Well, guess what? I don't have that endurance. I've seen enough. One other thing that I feel like I should mention is the music. Along with the gameplay, the music was also part of what made the original game so fun. Being hyped up with a bunch of upbeat rock tracks, what does Sonic Runners Adventure have? Green Hill Zone. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good song, but here? I think I've reached the peak of my disappointment. If you want to play Sonic Runner's Adventure, go ahead. It's probably free or something. Alright, I'm hurting someone. Sonic Runner's Adventure sucks. Don't play it. I'm done talking about the game. I'm going to talk about games that make me less angry now, like Sonic Forces. Speed Battle. With Hardlight back at the helm for developing mobile Sonic games, Sonic Forces Speed Battle returns to the 3D perspective sliding different paths formula from the Sonic Dash series. However, unlike those previous Sonic Dash games, this is a race to the finish line against players across the world. It's kind of like Sonic Runner's Adventure in that sense, of it kind of fundamentally changing the original Sonic Dash games. However, unlike Sonic Runner's Adventure, this doesn't replace Sonic Dash, and it's actually fun! While the gameplay is mostly the same, each character will be entirely different. Each character has their own abilities, and you go up against different characters in every race. So there's actual incentive to playing as someone like Tangle the Lemur outside of the concept of playing as a different character? No, she's the worst in the game, but oh, let's make her girlfriend have one of the best movesets in the entire freaking game! This is the same comedy that allowed Sonic Genesis to release. On the subject of characters, the character roster in this game is absolutely insane. It feels like what Sonic Runners was trying to build up to before it shut down. You have one-off characters like T-Call, Gamma, Infinite, IDW characters like Tangle, Whisper, and Surge, the Sonic movie characters, and not Six the Badger. Put in Six the Badger. I dare you. This is genuinely one of the most packed rosters I've seen in a mobile game. The best part is that it isn't gotcha based. It just takes the FOMO from Gotcha. FOMO, or the fear of missing out, is pretty much the name of the game here. You don't really gain too much of an advantage by spending money on the game outside of removing ads or doubling what you already have one time. The only thing you have to worry about is grinding out all of these character cards in time to unlock your favorite character. Some characters are always available to unlock, like Tangle, thank god, but others like Infinite, Surge, the movie characters, and the Prime characters are only available during specific limited time events. I kind of understand the movie characters since they're technically owned by a different company, but Nephilus the Dark? Arc? The character from Sonic 06? The game that SEGA ruined? This gimmick for getting people to all jump in at the same time isn't bad, but it feels oddly scummy to me despite never taking a dime from my wallet. That's really all Sonic Forces Speed Battle has to its name. 
I guess I could talk about Luminous Forest being one of the only stages that's really unique. It's pretty cool. Uh, Forces Speed Battle is pretty fun, but it's nothing crazy like Runners. Okay, what are the next two games? Wow, two games that I've already gone in depth about. I've already discussed Sonic at the Olympic Games, and I went over Sonic Racing when I discussed every single version of Team Sonic Racing, so I won't bore you with too many details since you can go back to those discussions. But in short, Sonic at the Olympic Games is pretty bare bones unless you want to drop $10 on it, and even then it kind of sucks outside of seeing Eggman swear. Sonic Racing is better, but it's just a simplified version of Team Sonic Racing, which isn't very good, but it's passable enough. But they added Green Hill Zone and Classic Sonic and neglected the console version of the game. I need a shower. Next is the latest Sonic mobile game, once again developed by Hardlight, Sonic Dream Team. And just by looking at the reveal trailer... Holy crap, this looks amazing! A fully 3D Sonic game with branching paths, multiple missions, unique playable characters, and a full-on story? 2D animations just like the console game? This might as well be a console game. Oh, look at the environments, they look so unique, all the bosses look so cool! Is that a giant enemy crab? This could be one of the greatest Sonic games of all time! I can't wait for everyone to actually enjoy a Sonic game together! Sonic is dead. Sonic Dream Team, despite looking to be one of the best Sonic games in the last half decade, is an Apple Arcade exclusive. And with it being funded by Apple themselves, it seems to be staying that way. I mentioned this when I went over all the Team Sonic Racing versions, but Apple Arcade is a subscription service that is home to tons of ad-free mobile games, along with a few major console releases. Now, many saw this as a hindrance, making this an incredibly inaccessible Sonic game. While it isn't wrong to say that this won't be accessible to many people, especially those with Android phones, saying this as a hindrance is not true. Apple Arcade is one of the biggest gaming subscriptions of all time, with over 100 million users. Even if half of those users played Sonic Dream Team, it would still be the most played Sonic game of all time. Which is weirdly sad. Well, if this has the chance of being the most played Sonic game, is it deserving of that title? Answer the question. Unlike the rest of the Sonic Mobile lineage, Sonic Dream Team has a story to tell. Not a good one, but it's still a story. Okay, so Dr. Eggman is attempting to use a dreamscape to make his dreams of ruling the world a reality. However, this dreamscape can only be directly accessed by the pure of heart. To work around this, Eggman kidnaps Cream the Rabbit and uses her as a host and feeds the dreams into the dreamscape through her. World terrorist, child kidnapper, Eggman's really done it all. After learning of Cream's whereabouts, Sonic's team and Rouge find themselves trapped in the dreamscape and need to work with the Guardian of Dreams, R.E.M., to prevent Eggman from bringing his dreams into reality and rescue Cream. That's really all that's worth talking about since, in my opinion, the proper cutscenes aren't too great. The only thing to really praise is the in-game animations. Everyone's voice performances aren't the greatest and many dialogue decisions really hammer in my distaste for how modern Sonic lore has been treated, but that's a topic for another day. We don't care about the story, we need to know. How is the gameplay of the video game? It's whatever to be honest. Sonic Dream Team is the first fully 3D Sonic game since Sonic 06 for the Xbox 360. I am so sorry. Unlike Sonic 06, however, the game is pretty well polished and can be pretty fun to play. There are three character types and there are two characters for each type. All types share the ability to boost and homing attack, but each type's aerial ability is what differentiates them. Sonic and Amy have the ability to do small dashes and speed across a trail of rings, Tails and Cream can fly through hoops and reach higher platforms, and Knuckles and Rouge are able to glide through the air and climb on specific walls. Each character can reach their own pathway with their unique ability, however, that doesn't help that these abilities mostly suck. Sonic and Amy can only speed across very specific trails of rings that could easily be replaced with a road, so it doesn't really feel all that fulfilling to pull it off. Tails and Cream can't take advantage of many higher platforms since they don't have proper collision. And Knuckles and Rouge's gliding is barely any handling whatsoever and it falls faster than a broken marriage. The controls and unique abilities in this game are the most whatever burger imaginable. There's cool stuff here, but nothing mind blowing. The overall world design on the other hand is actually pretty interesting. There are four different locations you must conquer. The first is this bouncy castle, washing machine, grassland, hybrid thing that looks super unique and has tons of small details that I didn't notice until further replaying. The second is this factory producing different colored gels that seem to be powering the dreams that Eggman's creating. The third is this giant maze looking area that has you running on the roofs, walls, and through waterfalls. And the fourth is a giant city covered in Eggman memorabilia that gives obvious vibes of Eggman land from Sonic Unleashed. Except this time, I'd actually be willing to replay this level. While these aren't really too crazy when compared to stages from the other Sonic games of the early to late 2000s, after almost 13 years worth of unoriginal stage designs and literally reused stages from the exact same game three times in a row, these stages are astronomically refreshing. What isn't refreshing though, in my opinion, is the mission structure. You ever 100% Super Mario Sunshine? Me neither. That's about to change. Sonic Dream Team stages are split into a few different missions. They can range from reaching to the end of the stage, 
reaching a dream orb, running through checkpoints to reach a specific point, reaching the end of the stage before time runs out, and that's right, you guessed it, collecting crystals. Yeah, most of Dream Team's missions boiled down to doing the same thing but with different restrictions, aside from the crystal collecting missions. It got to a point where I'd have to complete multiple missions from one stage just to unlock the next one, so I'd be essentially replaying that stage over and over and over and over again, but this time, ooh, I have a bomb strapped to my leg that'll go off if I'm not fast enough! A lot of these stages can be pretty fun to complete, especially with the many different paths you can take in some of them, but having to play them again and again just to reach the next one that can sometimes be incredibly similar really took me out of it and made me put the game down on multiple occasions. The last thing to really go over is the sound design. Uh, the opening theme is really good. Mostly everything else is whatever. Voice acting sucks as always. Nothing new on that front. I'm tired, man. Can we be done already? Sonic Dream Team is a perfectly well-made Sonic game, and that's all it'll ever be to me. It's weird seeing so many people praise this game as the best Sonic game since Mania, calling it peak, saying Hardlight should make console games for the Sonic brand, and pretty much any other definition for parasocial love. While I think the game is generally fun and will definitely be loved by tons of newcomers who came from the Sonic movies or Sonic Prime, comparing this to the countless 3D Sonic games that have been released, even the 2D ones, this feels like nothing more than a regular old platformer. A good regular old platformer, but it's still a regular old platformer. Nothing special. This is the part where the angry mob comes at my door. And so, we've discussed every Sonic mobile game that's worth discussing. The final thing to go over is which one is the best mobile game, and which is the best game overall. Both goes to Sonic Runners, I don't feel like building it up. Sonic Runners has some of the most satisfying movement in a Sonic game I've ever experienced. On top of that, it's the perfect game to play on a whim. Whipping the game out to do a quick endurance test and try to not get hit by obstacles or falling to your death barely gets old when played regularly. However, it isn't playable anymore officially, so I guess it doesn't count. If I can't choose that one, uh... Sonic Dream Team, if that'll get everybody to shut up. I would've picked Sonic Dash 2, but I would've been hung by jumper cables. To me, Sonic Dream Team doesn't feel like a game perfectly fit for mobile. This feels like a lost Sonic game made for the PS Vita that Sega slapped onto Apple subscription service. The game isn't the greatest without a controller. The many options for movement can be way too overbearing for quick sessions on a small screen, and the game can get really boring really fast when played regularly. However, it's the most fleshed out game on the list, and feels the most like a proper console game, so, if that's what you look for on your iPhone, just go play Resident Evil 4. Mobile games in general will always be important, as they'll be the ones that'll be played by most people out there in the world. Whether basement dwellers are willing to admit that remains to be confirmed. While many of these Sonic mobile games are well made, it also sucks that many of them are completely left in the dust, like Sonic Dash 2, Sonic Jump, and especially Sonic Runners. Whether you're mostly looking for something fun to play or something to waste time on, there's definitely something for you in these mobile games, so give them a shot. Don't be scared. Try new things. Especially you as a Sonic fan, I want you to get off that Sonic game you've been playing for the past two hours and play some Gravity Rush.